If you're new to the channel, my name is Brandon, and today we have an awesome adventure planned for you guys. This video is sponsored by Aerial Rider. I'm going to be taking their X-Class off-road bicycle into the woods to showcase some amazing Alabama history dating all the way back to pre-Civil War times. So let's get right to it. So when Aerial Rider approached me and asked me to do this video, I was like, man, I don't know. I don't like doing a ton of sponsored videos, but then they showed me the bike and well it matched my truck so it was a no-brainer right <laughs> only kidding this is an amazing product guys and i'm very excited to take this thing out on a trail today and give it a true test if you can't tell it is full suspension so it does have a rear shock right here it does have a nice front fork this thing is not light it's just shy of 90 pounds however this thing will go a long distance on a single charge which is a huge deal so I can't wait to show y'all what we're going to go look at today. So I'm going to go ahead and get on here and let's get going. All right, guys, this is an original old roadway. You may notice that it's well kept and that's because we're in a state park here. I hope the wind noise isn't too bad. If you look down here, I'm cruising at 10 miles an hour going uphill. No problem at all. This bike suspension seems to be very good too. I'm not jarring to death or anything like that. We have about 0.7 miles to go to get to where we're going to be at. All right, guys, we're at our first destination which is an old Civil War iron furnace. And this place has always been one of my favorite places to come visit. So let's get off for just a second and show y'all around. Let's see if I can drive through here. Once upon a time, you could ride your bicycle right through the middle of these furnaces. Oh yeah, check that out. Here we go. We'll get back here and park in the shade. So the Tannehill Iron Works was attacked by three companies of the 8th Iowa Cavalry under the command of Captain William A. Sutherland on March 31st, 1865. So this particular site that we're at right now was actually attacked and burned to the ground. If you look right here, the rock is dark and then you see how it gets lighter. That's where they restored this back during, I believe, the 1970s. And if you have seen any of my other past videos, uh, one of the coke oven sites that we visited they actually harvested the rock from the coke ovens to come in and repair this. And those coke ovens are just 10 or 15 miles south of here. That electric bike made it really fast getting here. I know that. This is a beautiful area to visit though. These things are towering. I just can't imagine building these things well over a hundred years ago with nothing but block and tackle. Now, look at us over a century later, riding around on a fully electric bicycle. <laughs> Who would have thought those guys would have had a heart attack looking at this compared to the horses that they were having to use. So my first impressions of this bicycle, that it is absolutely amazing, guys. Check out that headlight. Headlight's still on right now. Nice and bright. This thing is almost like a mini dirt bike. Look at the big old wide fat tires on it. Those things soak up a lot of what you hit, like rock-wise, bump-wise, if you hit a divot in the road. But that suspension is really the difference maker. You can look right here. It looks like I've only used about that much of the front fork so far. It does have a tail light on the back for if you are on the road. You do have blinkers. Check this out. I flip that blinker on right there. See it flashing right there? You can probably make it out. That's pretty cool. Again, this thing does around 36 miles per hour, which is really neat. Let's go ahead and ride it to the next location. So for this part of the journey, we are leaving the dirt and we are going to be on pavement. So let's just see. Man, guys, that is kicking it on a bicycle right there. 22 miles per hour. That is really fast. I mean, actually a little bit scary fast, to be honest. Let's see a truck coming in. This is a one way. I was kind of going up and backwards, so I guess we will jump off the road. There we go. And back on the road. That motor's pretty quiet too. Right now I've got it on pedal assist one. As I'm holding my camera with one hand, I'm not using the throttle at all. And I'm just pedaling just ever so lightly. So here is the Alabama Iron and Steel Museum. I definitely recommend if you're in this area to come check it out. It's got a lot of neat artifacts in there, a lot of Civil War artifacts, stuff like that. But what I wanted to show y'all was behind it. If you look right back here, underneath this awning, there's some pretty cool artifacts. So as we walk underneath the awning, take a look at this old Fordson tractor. 1927 right there, guys. How do you like those iron wheels? I bet you that made for an incredibly bumpy ride. 
Meanwhile, there again, almost 100 years later, and I'm riding that electric bicycle right there. <laughs> Absolutely insane what a century will do time-wise. Take a look at this safe, though. This safe is really why I wanted to come show y'all. If you look at it, this is circa 1880. This came out of the Martin Furniture Company in Bessemer, Alabama, which was located on 2nd Avenue between 19th and 20th Streets. Sadly, it is locked. What's interesting about this, though, is, is that it was in Bessemer, Alabama, which is home to the rarest Coca-Cola Hutchinson bottle. You've got different farm implements. <clears throat> this is kind of near and dear to my heart right here. This is an old engine lathe. Uh, a lot of you don't know I used to be a machinist, so... It's got an old four jaw chuck on it. That was back whenever machinists didn't have computer numerical control or CNC. Old press sitting here. These are what they would have used to pour that molten iron. Let's go check out the next site. All right, guys, I'm going to show you all a zero pedal assist start. And I'm going to show you how fast this thing accelerates because I'm pretty shocked actually how fast it is. We're going uphill slightly. I know it's probably hard to tell on camera, but let's go ahead and give this thing a go and see what happens. Again, zero pedal assist. I wonder how many kids rode their bicycles to this school right here. <laughs> this is a pretty cool school, guys. So this is the Cane Creek School. This is not where it originally sat. This actually used to sit in Warrior, Alabama. Uh, it was probably built around 1923, and they moved it 40 miles south to here back during the 1970s, where it was restored, and it has been maintained, thankfully. I can't imagine the original site and how much silver or coins or relics are in the ground there. I would love to be able to metal detect that area. There again, just an absolutely awesome piece of history. And we're gonna go ahead and move to our next site. Let's do a speed test on the way back. We are humming at 22, 25, 26. We're going uphill too. 27, 28. There's 30 miles an hour and I'm getting a little scared driving one-handed. <laughs> this bike's so quiet, I snuck right up on a deer. Little doe right there. She didn't even hear me coming. So this old store right here is actually where you check in for camping now and there is a camp store built into it. However, it is a turn of the century store that was moved here again, but check out the old Dr. Pepper sign right here and the Royal Crown Cola. Zoom in where y'all can see it. That is pretty neat, guys. I love the old signage on these buildings. There is a Pepsi sign on the other side. I'm going to go over there and show that to you now. And here is the other side of the building with the Pepsi sign. The light refreshment with the old bottle cap up there. That's pretty neat. All right, we're back to the truck. Check this out. We did 8.9 miles since I charged it, and we have not dropped one bar on the battery. That's absolutely crazy. All right, I'm gonna load it up, head home. I'm gonna show you all how we put this thing together and go over a couple more specs with y'all. All right, guys, my favorite hidden feature on this bike, and I guess it's not really hidden, but something that's not typical for electric bikes is, Addy, go ahead and show them what you were doing. Other side, there's pegs on the back, and this thing is set up for a passenger. Now they sell a separate seat, and I don't have it on here yet, but that's okay, she don't mind, do you? You're gonna ride with me? <laughs> all right, let's show them how we do it. Let me get on first. Okay. All right, you climb up there. You on? Yeah. All right, let's go take it for a ride. <laughs> All right, guys, a lot of you may not know this, but I'm a motorcycle enthusiast. I've been riding motorcycles and dirt bikes since, since I was around eight years old. In my adult life, I got away from riding dirt bikes and went into street bikes and got into mountain biking. And I had a blast riding mountain bikes. And then I got into electric bikes within the last year. This is number six for me on electric bikes. I'm actually running out of storage to house them. But this is my favorite electric bike that I own currently. Hands down, it's the best. The quality of the build, the motor, uh, it being 52 volts is just a game changer. With me and my daughter on it, I weigh 220 pounds. I'm a bigger guy. And I throw my daughter on there, who's around 50 pounds. We're talking about almost 300 pounds. I could go uphill with her on this thing at 25 miles per hour. No problem at all without even having to pedal. That's a huge deal. The screen on this one is one of the more easier screens to navigate. That's the good part. There's limited buttons on there. You can hold the button down right here, get it to come on. 
you can see instantly the headlight come on. It shines on the wall over there. You can adjust your pedal assist up and down right here, which is easy. Pedal assist five is going to be the fastest. Earlier, I just had it on one the whole time, which is pretty neat. You do have the two buttons down there, though. This is your mode selectors. Now, to do the 36 miles per hour that I was telling you all about, you do have to go in here and unlock it because this is a class two. If you look down here, this is a class two electric bike. Class two electric bikes are usually governed around 20 to 22 miles an hour or something like that. So you have to turn that off to get that extra 36 miles per hour, which is in the instruction book, uh, which with me being a more experienced rider, obviously I wanted it to go faster. So I turned that off immediately to get the full speed out of it. Absolutely amazing bike though. It does have the Shimano cassette down here which is really nice. The rear pegs, the accessories you can get for this is absolutely insane. There's more accessories for this bike than any of my other bikes as well. Uh, like the rear seat for my daughter, which I just ordered. Uh, you can also put right here a basket that they have, which would be neat if I found bottles or relics or anything. I could put them in there if I took this out into the woods. Uh, you do have the adjustable suspension on the front fork. There again, the, even the handle grips on this are absolutely amazing. If you look right here, they're just, they're hand stitched. They feel like leather. I don't know if they are or not. There's your twist grip th throttle, which is ready to go. I didn't talk about the brakes earlier, but these are disc brakes and they did fantastic guys. I absolutely enjoyed the heck out of them. I was really surprised. They are tech tro. So there again, they are a really good brake on the front and rear of this bike. You can see this one right here a little bit too. So overall, I had a blast. I do have a time lapse of me assembling that, which I'm going to throw right here on the end of this video. If you're new to the channel and this is the first time visiting here and you see this, this is not what we always do. We don't always do reviews. A lot of times we're out searching for history, and that's why I included some history clips. For those of you that are already on the channel, thank you all for watching. We really appreciate all of your support. And at that, let's go ahead and go to the time lapse, and we'll see you guys in the next adventure.